from DLab everybody. I'm working on another Johnson transmitter, but it's not a Viking 2. This is a rare bird. It's a Johnson Invader 200. I picked this up about maybe five, six years ago from a fellow ham, and he told me that it transmitted, but it was erratic, and he gave up on the repair. So I picked it up pretty reasonably, and recently I thought, well, I should just get into it, see what's going on, and if I can fix it relatively quick, it'd be a good one to send down the road, because I don't have any interest in running it, okay? So I did try to transmit, and what would happen is when I go to manual transmit, it would put out about a 100 watt carrier, but then when I go back to standby, it would latch on. It would not stop transmitting. I suspected maybe a negative bias issue because it got about a uh, negative 140 volts that goes to the final and that's being switched by the internal TR relay system. Okay, The relay was actually disengaging yet it was still transmitting. So I thought man something's really strange here. Okay, So I went around around circles, cleaned the contacts on that relay. I really suspected it was that, but it turned out that the driver tube didn't have any B plus going to it. Okay, and for some reason, the finals in this thing would get excited and put out output even though you were not in the transmit mode. A very strange failure. So I got into the area of the driver section and I found this little 5 watt 1K resistor that was open going to the driver tube. I replaced it and when I turned it on, she started getting hot. I could see a little wisp of smoke coming off of it. I thought, oh boy, here we go. Time to search for the short. So what I'm going to do, I'll give you guys a guided tour of this thing because they are pretty rare. And then I'll show you the area that I'm working in. I plan on just dissecting everything off of that tube socket underneath so I can trace down the short. So let's go. So here is the Johnson Invader 200 transmitter. The bands are 80 through 10 meters. Modes are upper and lower side band, AM and CW. I hear they don't do so great on AM, but side band mode and CW is supposed to be a great machine. You got a dial drum here, kind of like what you see on a National 300. Only one meter because this one here was reserved for conversion to the 2000 model, which this obviously is not. Okay, all right, let's take a look around the back. All right, back side, this is your RF cage that has the pair of 6146s. The power supply is actually separate, so when you would remove this. This is where the pair of 4-400 output tubes would go for the 2000 upgrade. All right? So if we swing over here, you can see our tube line up, and that driver tube that I was telling you about is right there. It's a 12BY7, and she's really running toasty hot. I read some articles that a lot of guys say get that shield off of there and pitch it to help cool that tube down. One of these, I believe this one, is the bias adjustment for the RF output section. There's the back of the current meter, and you can see the slot for the added one should you upgrade the transmitter. I don't see any signs of modifications. It's really a clean unit. I hope I can get it going. Let me show you uh, underside. I got it on its side. It's kind of difficult to flip this thing on its top because there's so much weight. I'm going to have to use some shoring to make sure nothing gets damaged. But the power supply caps have been replaced. I did change this one down here, which is a dual can type. It's a dual 40 microfarad at 450. But the rest of these are already in place. So if we swing up here to this middle cavity, the resistor that I changed right there. So under the shaft, get some lighting in here, right down there is the base of the 12BY7 tube. So somewhere in this area there must be a short. We'll take a look at the schematic here in a minute and we can see if we can narrow it down. There is that four pole TR relay. 
and you can see the contacts are really close on this thing but they are engaging and disengaging just fine there are still some older electrolytic caps up in this area but I don't think they have anything to do with this issue so right now let's just concentrate on the driver tube so I'm going to remove the shaft so I can get access and what I plan to do is lift the 1k resistor and there's a 10k resistor underneath of it and get those up out of the way and measure the resistance to ground I did already check it and there is not a direct short but there is a low resistance path well real quick let me show you the resistance on the other side of the 1k resistor okay so this is feeding the plate of the 12by7 so you're seeing approximately let's just call it 30k all right now let's zing over here to the schematic there is the 1k resistor okay we just measured right there and saw 30k all right so if you follow this line it goes through a 10k resistor and that goes to the screen of the 12BY7 and then there's another resistor which is 39k to ground so I would expect at this point to see approximately 50k so something is interfering and that something might be this cap or this cap might be shorted that's what I'm hoping this line also takes off and goes up here to part of the band switch I believe but everything's capacitors there so I don't suspect the problem is in this area I suspect it's down here but the only way to know is to lift the components and see where the low resistance path is so as usual here's that 10k resistor right on the money here's the 39k same deal here's that disc cap that was tied to the same point also noticed when I got in here that all these parts were tagged on to the tube socket so somebody's already been going down this path okay so there's something else on that line that's pulling the power supply down this is really gonna get good so I've been buzzing out this thing I found one area of question and that is C82 I believe this is the neutralization cap if I measure across it I am seeing just under 2 K ohms looking at the schematic there's nothing in line with this variable cap that could give it that low of resistance I have no idea where this 2k is coming from I did notice something on a coil assembly here let me zoom in on it show you what's going on obviously some things went wild in this invader I'm not sure if it's going to be an easy fix so one thing I forgot to tell you is this 1k resistor when I got it had a crack through it and you could see it it had been arcing but if you look at this coil down below you'll see that the windings have really been heating so at this point I've checked these mica caps none of them appear shorted so I'm gonna go topside and take a look under that RF cage and see if we got something goofy going on it looks like maybe some bias is getting back in through the neutralization circuit and making that driver tube go wild all right, I give. I guess I need to phone a friend. If anybody out there knows anything about these Invader 200 transmitters, get a hold of me. I've checked everything. The uh, 2K that I saw across that cap is because of other components. I found that there was 1K and some other miscellaneous things that would add up to that resistance. So that's not a problem. But I've spent too much time on it and hopefully there's somebody out there that's had this issue before and you can give me some pointers. So I give. Email me.
shoot me a message. Help.